Hello and welcome to an introduction on Kepler data analysis, light curve collection, and phase plots. First thing you want to do is bring up the Exoplanet Transit Survey Kepler search webpage as noted here. Once you get there you will be presented with some information at the very top which you should read. Sometimes it includes things like the database is broken, please don't use. In this case it's stating that certain browsers are better than others. Right now you want to input a star ID, which you would get from a scientist or from other search terms or methodologies, and go ahead and search for the star ID data. Here we have three sets of data presented with both long cadences as 30 minute integrations and short cadences of one minute, and then things like the right ascension, declination, the variety of um, the, the days in which the data was taken in Julian time, Julian dates, the magnitudes of the object, and then the surface temperature and things like solar radii and whatnot are also given. So a lot of information about the object there. If you're not sure what the information means, just click on one of the headings and it will define it for you on a separate window. If you go back to your search results, you can then click on create a light curve and you'll get a raw light curve of your data. And this is a really nice light curve of your object, 5513861. You've got a flux versus the Julian date on the x-axis. And it will tell you that you also have to multiply those values by certain numbers or add numbers. You can also um, specify which Julian dates and times you'd like to look at if you're looking at just a specific date or time. You can also download the information in ASCII format or in FITS file format so that you can analyze it in other softwares. Down below, don't miss all the information about the star itself. Lots of stuff about stellar characteristics, light curve characteristics, the details of the pure observations and stuff like that. Now if you click on calculate or compute a periodogram, it will give you a fast Fourier transform of the data set with the dates that you have selected. And here's a really nice one, power spectrum, the power versus the period in days that the star may or may not have. And we're looking for thin, tall spikes like this one. That's a perfect one. These shorter ones are aliases. They're probably not periods of the star. So down below, it will list the different ranked values of those spikes. The period here is a really good one, 0.75 of a day or so. And it gives you all the other spikes values as well with decreasing values of power. Power should be a large value. From here, you can generate a phased plot of the data. And if you click on Generate Phase Plot, it will do so. I like to start with the one with the highest power. And here is the phase plot in flux versus phase. And your phase is 0.75 of a day period. And you've got a really nice light curve of an eclipsing binary star here. To give you an example of a phase plot uh, for the other periods that it has determined may be possible, um, you could do that. You can also change um, the constant range here, whether or not you want to look at specific dates or times. Let's look at a second phase plot, one for one of the aliases. And it, here it is, um, obviously not a good function. It's got overlapping data. So it's not a very likely period at all. In fact, it's not. Uh, let's click on another one further down. And look at that one, even worse a lot of overlapping data there. So obviously the first one was the correct period, this one, and it's lovely. It's a very nice period, all in all. So you go back here, you can change things, you can change things here as well. Um, always good to think about what you can do in order to further analyze your data. You might want to go back and look at other phase plots from the other sources, long and short cadence values, and then you're done. Hope this has helped.